that really it? No, more. Kibbles hasn't been seen for over a week. I'm really anxious about meeting him. What if it didn't work? Or wor Oh, we are. Or worse, what if he became sick and no one was able to help him? The antidote has been so successful on me that I stopped being able to communicate with cats a few days ago, so I can't even get any information about him. All I've been able to do is turn up at designated place every day and leave his dose in the petri dish mixed with a little minced chicken. Each time I return, the dish is empty, so I assume he's taking it. It's been a roller coaster taking my own daily stats and seeing everything return to normal. A real mixture of sadness at separating from my feline community, but excitement also at seeing the antidote doing its job and proving itself a success. And finally, we're here. The last day, last dose, the final showdown. I told Kibbles a week ago that I would meet him at this spot. I left some of my clothes for him in the hope that the results are good. And here I am. There's no sign of him. Kibbles? You around? Oh, we're on Halley. No answer, so I sit down and wait. As the minutes tick by, my heart sinks. He's not coming. Something's wrong. I need to look for him, help him. Then suddenly something lands on me from behind, sends me sprawling. I'm being wrestled by someone. I manage to scramble free as I hear a familiar voice. Heh, <laughs> I won. You're useless against me. Now I am at full strength. You'll never beat me. It's him, it's Kibbles. Oh wow, look at you Kibbles. This is amazing. He's exactly how I imagined he would look. A little taller maybe. But the lopsided grin is there and I'm used to him instantly. Heh, <laughs> what do you think? That I wouldn't make the grade. Think again, lesser mortal, for I am a god. You certainly are. So it, it all went okay, no problems? Of course not. It was a spin in a phone box. No regrets? Are you joking? Check out these beauties. He wriggles his thumbs in my face. Well, how kips? We can have thumb wars. Yes, but can we not call me that dumb name anymore? What, kibbles? He blushes. Yeah, that. Okay, what shall we rename you? Got anything in mind? Yeah, I have. I thought if this day ever comes, I would want to name you fitting the momentousness of it. Okay. He strains himself up to his full height, shoulders back, chest puffed up. I hope I'm going to be able to keep a straight face for him. Oh, fuck's sake. <laughs> Stanthag Helm Crush. At first, I'm not sure if it's a joke, but the earnest look on his face tells me he's perfectly serious. Well, that's it. It's very... You can call me Stan for short, though. I heave a silent sigh of relief and quickly grab him in a hug. Great to finally meet you, Stan. But then, we're in company. You must use my full name. I will, Stan Thug. Helm Crush. I certainly will. We stare at each other for what begins to feel like an awkward long time. I decide to finally break the silence. So there's just one more question that I need to be answered. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I've been giving that some thought. PC or console? What? I'm talking about our future. Oh, yeah, me too. We need to pick one soon if we're going to game together. Stan, I'm talking about where we put the PC. Oh, you're thinking PC, huh? Kibbles, I'm asking whether we should live here or start our lives together on the mainland. Oh, we got a choice. Does this make a difference? Oh, either way, it means I'm going to have to go through again. Bollocks. <laughs> Stay on the island. Because I need to see 100% of the story, which means I need to go to the mainland with everyone. I think maybe, hopefully not. I'm nervously waiting for Snooty to make her entrance. She told me to wait for her at her own favourite spot on the beach, under the shade of the palm tree. I can't wait to see her in a human form. That's assuming it worked for her as well as it has for me. We've both been taking the antidote for the past week on her strict instructions. I've not been allowed to see her, but my results have been amazing. All my vitals have returned to normal. God, you know you should stand in the presence of a lady, Barry. I hear a voice before I see her, and the sound of her voice gives me goosebumps. I jump up and turn around, but still no sight of her. Snoops, where are you? That name is no longer suitable, and I demand that you stop using it immediately. Whatever you say, Snoo, uh, madam, just please come out so that I can see if it's worked. If it's worked, of course it's worked. Why would it work on you and not me? As I follow her voice to behind the largest of the trees, I catch my first sight of her. Oh my goodness, you look incredible. Yes, well, we're going to have to get me some decent clothes. The rags you left for me will not do one bit. I like the touch of the red in the hair to 
from when they were pissing about with the nail polish, I believe. She's wearing a dress I managed to pilfer from the Marigold's washing line. It hangs rather forlornly from a tall, elegant frame. Shopping is the first thing on my agenda. Slow down a minute, Snoots. Let's take it nice and easy. You're new to all of this. Actually, I'm not. Fewer memories than I expected have returned. But there is enough to tell me that I was a very competent human being for a very long time. That's great. What's more, I was an extremely talented shopper. I cannot wait to visit the mainland and brush up my skills. You have all the time in the world to do whatever you want. So take it, there are no regrets. If you've taken leave of your senses, look at me. Why would I regret anything? You're right, you look stunning. And she is. I see now the alabaster skin she was always protecting and the frame of delicate bones. Truly aristocratic. How do you feel? Remarkably well, considering. She draws a dramatic twirl so that I can appreciate her beauty, then stops in front of me. Very serious. I believe I owe you my gratitude, Barry. I will never be able to thank you enough, but I will certainly never stop trying. I cannot believe these words coming out of Snooty Booty's mouth. Then... Where is it, then? Where's what? I trust you arrange first-class transport for me. My delicate constitution does not travel well. Oh, snooty booty, it's a five-minute walk into camp. Very well. Come along. And suddenly she's off leading the way, leaving me to follow in her first steps. I have a feeling this is the pattern of how our lives are going to be, but I don't mind. I'm just happy beyond words. I was thinking of prudence. Oh, yes, what's that? Me. Possibly prudence suits me, does it not? I had a cat called Prudence, funnily enough. I think you can be called whatever you like, Prudence. Then she waits for me to catch up to her. She slips her delicate little hand in mine and gives it a gentle squeeze. You know, we have some serious talking to do. I suppose you'll be wanting to know what my grooming requirements as a human massage things like that i express the laugh that's working its way up my throat yes of course that but also where our future lives will be here or the mainland oh yes i see that is a rather large question on the island everybody gets to stay on the island today's the day again my heart is in my mouth as i make my way to our meeting spot i haven't seen mac for a week each day i've left the saucer outside his little hideout in the forest he wanted it mixed with some grog surprise so i've just been coming and tripping the antidote into a saucer don't know yet if he's even been taking it what if he changed his mind decided not to take the risk it is still a risk although i've taken every precaution possible deliberately waiting long enough to see if nico developed any side effects before allowing anyone else to take it i know it's working on me though all my vitals have returned to normal and two days ago i stopped being able to understand the cancers i no longer speak their language that was a sadness and i feel almost like a traitor but ultimately, I'm hoping they will all benefit from this breakthrough and be able to return to their human form. Also, if all of the people get rid of the ability to speak cat, how are they going to communicate to the other cats that they can, in fact, get the cure? Although it did seem like Ravenpaw could understand human before they knew she could speak cat. I've reached our spot, but McMurphy is nowhere to be seen. Mac... It's me. I don't know if you can understand me anymore. Are you here? I can hear something rustling in the bushes. Is that you? It's okay. Whatever has happened, I can help you. Just let me see you. Are you sure you're ready for this scour? Oh, Mac, thank goodness you're okay. And it strikes me that I can hear him again. You're speaking. Well, I never stopped doing that as far as I'm aware, Car. I'd go as far as to say I'm a born orator. If you don't come out of those bushes right now, I'm coming in to get you. Well, you knew you'd never be able to control yourself around me. And there he is. It's strange and wonderful at the same time. And Murphy stood in front of me, a little restricted by the clothes I left him. My size, not his. He's bigger than I'd imagined, taller and broader. But every bit as rugged and handsome. Wow, Murphy, is that really you? Now, don't you think there could only be one of me? Disappointed or delighted? Truth now, Carr. I want to laugh, I'm so happy. Of course I'm delighted. I step forward to hug this amazing friend who I've shared such a journey with. We embrace for a long time. You know you're going to need to know my first name. Hmm. I don't know you had one. I just always thought of you as being McMurphy. Like McDonough. Or a prince. 
Oh, shit. Connor. Who's Connor? Me. That's my name. I stand back and look at him. Yes, I like it. It suits you. Although you'll always be Murph to me. Actually, Gar, you used to call me Mac, didn't you? Uh, I think I did sometimes. Well, what's in a name? That which we call a rose by any other word which smell as sweet. Get you remembering Shakespeare already. Well, you have to say, Gar, I was a bit worried that I might regret transitioning. And? Shakespeare. You. Not a bit of it. We think this will get better and better. He crooks his arm for me to link. Lead me to the nearest tavern. That may be further than you think, Connor. That's a good point, Car. What'll it be? Mainland or Island? Your place or mine? Island. My voice is actually going. I have no idea what to expect. My hands are trembling. I've been taking 400 milligrams of the antidote every morning and all my vitals have returned to normal. My hearing was decreased and vision in the dark has become virtually non-existent. As of yesterday, I haven't been able to communicate with the cats. When Trixie found out I had a breakthrough with the antidote, she insisted I try it on her as well as myself. I tried to make her wait, but she saw what the longer term results were for me and Nico. I didn't want to put her at risk. But she wouldn't accept no for an answer, so I stopped arguing. I have been leaving a small saucer of the medication mixed with food outside a cave every morning. She requested that we don't see each other during the process of human transition. As she's worried, she'll frighten me. She could never frighten me, but I respect her wishes. We've arranged to meet on the beach on the day of our final doses. I'm feeling anxious. I hope it's worked, and she's happy. I lift the medicine to my mouth and take the final dose. I close my eyes as Trixie requested and wait for her to arrive feels like forever but finally I hear her approach human I mean Gary her voice is the same you can open your eyes now despite my fear I open my eyes as soon as I see her I let out a gasp <gasps> well y y you're human yes that's awkward bold clumsy body is definitely not feline are you disappointed Obviously, we spoke a lot about whether it was the right thing for her. Might she miss being a cat? What things could go wrong? I was more worried than her. Trixie takes everything in her stride. It it will just be another part of the adventure, Humi. I never really thought of the possibility of her not liking being a human once she had transitioned. Suddenly, I'm scared. She thinks she made a mistake. Are you? Am I what? Disappointed in me. That's when I really look at her for the first time, standing in front of me. The tiny calico cat that I have come to know so well. Only she's not that cat anymore. Instead, she's a beautiful human with milky skin and wild hair. Still delicate, but strong and fierce and wonderful. I don't like the fact that this game is pushing a narrative towards it matters what they look like since you fell in love with them while you were a different species. I'm utterly under your spell. You could never disappoint me. Good, because I intend to stay by your side for the rest of my one and only life. We take a step towards each other and then we're holding hands. And then we're spinning round and round, our heads thrown back, hair caught up in the wind and we laugh. I love you, Trixie. Still spinning. My name is Belle. Trixie Belle. Ha! Ah, pleasure to meet you, Belle. And we slow to a stop. I realise it's time to come back down to Earth. You know, we're going to have to make some big decisions now, Belle. Belle beams. Big decision sounds stupendous. What kind of big decisions? Well, where to live would be a start. We have to choose one way or the other, island or mainland. And again, everyone's getting to choose, but you need to stay on the island to administer the medicine to the other cats. Selfish git. Two down, two to go. Oh wait, can Ravenport even become human? I'm standing in the forest where I agreed to meet, feeling a little woozy. Sit on the stump of a tree and swallowed my last dose of antidote. It turns my stomach and I have to take a deep breath to stop myself from retching. I suppose this is how Ravenport must have felt most of her life, taking medications that were meant to make her better, in fact made her feel so much worse. Are we actually getting Ravenport? I wonder how she's getting on with this. She was totally insistent that I don't see her during the process, and that we should only meet up in the last day of our treatment. It's really hard staying away. I had to fight the urge to go looking for her and check that she's alright. Because Ravenport was bred from a cat and an elder, or a human... A catanized human, no doubt. Either way, I close my eyes as promised and wait for her to approach me. 
After a short while, I hear slow, measured footsteps crunching through the fallen leaves. I'm a little paranoid that it's the professor on Zane, but I decide to keep my eyes shut regardless. Yeehaw! Finally, a delicate, cold hand on my shoulder. I somehow I instantly know that it belongs to Ravenpool. A shock of excitement runs through me as I realise that this means the antidote works. Not just on me, but also on fully transitioned cats and half elders. Um, I'm here, I guess. I'm so happy to hear her voice again. I spent so many hours sitting together, going over every detail of what transition might entail. Not just the physical changes and possible difficulties, but also the feelings. It was a far more risky decision for Ravenpaw than any other cats. She had never been human. We weren't even sure if it would work on her. What if it caused trauma or injury to her, left her deformed or debilitated? I replay our last conversation in my head. Do you think I'd still feel like a cat, trapped in a human body? Well, none of the cats said they felt like humans trapped in a cat's body. It's probably the same the other way around. We can't know in advance, unfortunately. If you're not sure, let's just wait until more is known. No, I've made up my mind. I want us to be together and to be free to do anything we want to do. We might travel the world together. And now here she is, fully transformed. Oh, well, aren't you going to say anything? Ravenpaw? Yeah, well, I was thinking about that. I don't think the name Ravenpaw suits me so much anymore. I guess I should have a human name now, right? So I thought about Miranda. I smiled and slowly opened my eyes. Oddly enough, she looked exactly as I'd imagined she would. The raven black hair and those beautiful eyes. One brown and the other blue. They both look black to me. Miranda, you look human. Well, that's a bit of a backhanded compliment. How do you get fucking piercings? No, you're beautiful. How do you feel? It's strange. It feels familiar, yet it can't. Can it? I don't know. Maybe you feel your parents within you. Your bloodline. I definitely have a strong sense of my mother. Like I remember her more clearly. She was a wonderful woman. And so are you, Miranda. No regrets? No. In fact, I feel like I've come home. Does that sound weird? I reach out and touch her silky hair, moving it away from her face. She catches my hand and kisses it. Thank you. I step towards her and wrap my arms around her. Miranda, there is just one thing. I feel her body tense. What? I won't have to change my name to Ferdinand, will I? We both start to laugh, more from relief than anything else. We know we have each other now, and our life will never be quite as scary or lonely again. So Miranda, will we be adrift on the island forever? What do you mean? Anywhere is home with you, but I still have to ask. Where are we going to live? Here, on the island, or are we going to start our lives together on the mainland? Island. Now the floofiest of butts. It's been nearly 24 hours since I stopped being able to communicate with cats. When we feel so cut off and powerless, what if something has gone wrong with the major transition and he has no way of letting me know? After I took my penultimate dose, I was already 100% back to human, so I have no reason to think the same wouldn't have happened to him. I'm just winding myself up. I should breathe the way I was taught to during Professor Pawpaw's yoga classes. Sitting by the Major's tree, the place we agreed before we went our separate ways, I keep turning the quakestone over and over in my hand to steady myself. I think back over the discussions we had leading up to this decision to take the antidote. He's so sensible. He preempted every possible outcome and talked me through how we would deal with them. I wonder why I'm still nervous. I guess he's a fairly old cat. I can't bear the thought of him being in any danger. My heart is pounding in my chest, and I drink my last dose of the antidote and close my eyes to wait for him to arrive. Within minutes, I hear footsteps slowly advancing until they stop right in front of me. Major clears his throat. Uh, before you open your eyes, I feel it's appropriate that I make a speech to mark this momentous occasion when man first invented the wheel. I can't stop myself from leaping up and flinging my arms around a man who has been my best friend for six months, though I feel like I've known him a lifetime. Major, you're human. I can't believe it. Rufabut seems to wipe a tear from his eyes. Or perhaps I imagined it, and he clears his throat. Yes, as I was saying. Much as I love to hear your speeches, can I suggest we talk as we walk? We're meeting the others at camp, and we don't have very long to get there. Surprise party! Major, how did you know? It was one of the benefits of being a feline. Marvellous hearing. Don't mind, do you? 
having a party? Well, certainly wouldn't be my choice. But one has to be a little gracious, I suppose. Actually, I meant losing the feline hearing. Oh, that. Swings and roundabouts, my dear. I certainly am looking forward to gaining mastery of a pair of thumbs again. That's a good trade-off, if you ask me. Well, I'm responsible for getting you to gathering on time. So, chop chop, don't want to be late. Ah, very good, Carrie. Efficient timekeeping is an important quality in a teammate. Teammate. Indeed. Is that not what we are going forward? Perhaps I have it wrong. And I see an unfamiliar look of uncertainty cross his whiskered face. It is sweet and touching. No, no, not wrong at all, Major. We are, as you so eloquently put it, teammates for life. One last thing, if I may. Anything for you. I prefer to be called by the human name from now on. I remembered it, which was rather pleasing, so I thought I would use it. Tom. Major t Fuck off. Just Tom, I think. Then Tom it is. So, Tom, there's a very important issue we need to discuss and rather do it while we're alone. He stops and looks at me with a furrowed brow. Okay, what is it? Don't look so worried. All I want to know is your thoughts about where we should start our new life together. Ah, uh, yes, that is a ticklish one. Here or on the mainland? I'm not sure, but I do know that as long as my life is shared with you, I will be contented. Good, I feel the same. And I link his arm and we wander off into our future on the island. How is this not over? The end! Everything in its right place. Research 1818. Recon 1818. Cat 66. And to do 100%. Uh, 88% of the game. Are you fucking kidding me? I'm heading over to Kibble's office. Although Man Cave would be a better description. To ask if he'll work his techno magic on the veterinary practice PC. Despite the phenomenal high tech changes that have taken place on Cat Island over the last year, I still manage to crash my computer on a regular basis. I know it's me because Kibbles has told me so. I was always happy to point out that none of the others, the shop's school calf bar, seems to have any technical issues. Only the vet and the research lab computers have regular problems, and both of which are my domain. As I open the door, I'm hit by the hot, musty smell of Kibbles when he hasn't left his pit all day. Hi. He's slumped in his gaming chair watching some kind of playthrough. Oh, wait, am I going to get all the story of them being on the island? He's slumped in his gaming chair watching some kind of playthrough on a normal screen. I wonder if he's fallen asleep. Gibbles. Yeah, name. Damn, I always forget. Stan Tharg Helm Crush. That's me, what's up? Guess. It's like you and technology have a blood pack to be sworn enemies or something. Well, I can't argue. It's ridiculous how often I get the gremlins. I'll do it before bed. Thanks, Dan. What's that? We're looking at frozen image of a small anime boy and lots of blood spare. Corpse party. Are you thinking of streaming it? Apart from looking after the island technology, Stan also runs a video channel where he reviews games and streams vintage stuff. He's become very popular over the last year and it makes him very happy. Nah, not this one. Why not? Too scary for you to play it yourself? He snorts in derision. And says a little too loudly. Heh, <laughs> not scary enough, more like. That's my brave soldier. Had dinner yet? I thought that was why you were here. We could eat pizza together and watch the rest of this. If you promise to eat some salad with it, I'm in. Hard, but fair. Grab a couple of beers too, let's make an eye of it. He taught me not to take life too seriously and enjoy the simple fun of playing a game. Looking from the outside in. I suppose we seem like an odd couple, but on the inside it works for us pace of life here on the island may have picked up since the coup. There are certainly many or more of us here, but it's still much slower than the mainland, and I'm really happy we decided to stay. Yeah, I'm going to get all of this. Hi, it snoots around. I'm at Snooty Booty's grooming parlour, one of the first buildings to be established on the island after the coup. Snooty insisted that we would always only be savages, scrabbling around in the dirt if we didn't have proper facilities to liberate ourselves from the grime of the working day. As always, she got away. Actually, I have to admit, she has a point, and it's proved very popular with our over-expanding community. There are now two girls working for her, and one cat who does the ever-in-demand making biscuits massage. Snooty Booty obviously never gets her hands wet. What did you call me? She snuck up behind me, making me jump. Oh, Prudence, you startled me. You weren't doing anything wrong. You wouldn't have such a nervous reaction. I'm sorry, Prue. I just forget sometimes. I still struggle to get used to the cat's human names, even a year down the line. 
So what brings you here during our frightfully important and busy scientific day? Would you like a manicure or better still a pedicure? Actually, I brought this fella in. Come on, you. The young cat slinks around the door, looking sheepish. Goodness, what have you been up to? Playing around in the rainbow pools? No, I wasn't. You mustn't tell Fibs, either. You know you oughtn't be that far without adult supervision. It's so close to the cliff's edges. He knows, and he's been suitably chastised. I've checked him over. No harm done. Well, except for the obvious. White youngster's fur is brightly coloured red. Orange, yellow, green, and blue. He looks like a rainbow. You know, it's really rather splendid. No, Prudence is not a new look. I really rather meant the boy who's sporting it. I stopped for a moment, not quite believing my ears. Was that snooty booty being maternal? Do you have a mummy and daddy child? I suppose there are two things I should explain. One, when we were administrating the antidote, the entire island population was undergoing the change. We discovered that if we got the balance exactly right, that's to say, combining a trace amount of elder DNA with the antidote, then the ability to communicate between our two species continued. So we really can talk to the animals, just like regular Dr. Doolittles. The second thing is that we also discovered that there were lots of litters of kittens who had lost parents, and even parents who discovered they couldn't cope with the dozens of children once their litters had been rehumanized. For a while it was chaotic, but this place is like one huge family really and so we all started adopting and fostering and in the end no one is left uncared for occasionally however the odd kitten will turn up who slip through the net but it's as safe place as you could wish for and no harm comes to any of them except through their own playfulness no i don't need anyone i'm a big boy and an adventurous boy yes i'm explorer oh my dear all the greatest explorers from history found that they had their most intrepid adventures when they were being anchored to a base camp. Isn't that right, Barry? I smiled to let her know I agree with her plan. Without a doubt, Prudence is very wise on these matters. So I think it might be a good idea if we provide you with a base camp. What do you think? Okay, where's the base camp? It's called home, actually, and what will set you in right now. I'm not surprised. Not really. This is Snooty Booty, after all. She may be a princess to the rest of the world. She doesn't fool me. This rainbow chap just had a very lucky day. After a long, busy day in the new veterinary hospitals, I'm so grateful that McMurphy insisted on building his own island bar. Of course he did. Okara's Cocktail Shack. It's the best place to unwind and catch up with how the other islanders are getting on. You barely recognise the place now. Apart from the hospital and bar, we have a school, a grooming parlour, shops, a cafe, and even an alternative therapy sanctuary. I wonder who made that one, which used to be Trixie's cave. I love it here. The decision to stay or return to the mainland was always a no-brainer for me. But now I couldn't imagine there being a different life that could ever match this. Mac and I are still together and very happy, so I must remember to call him Connor. At least he's not as touchy about his name as some of the other reverted people. I'm on my way to see him now. He asked me to pop in after work, especially. So I'm curious to know what's afoot. The bar is lively as usual. Colin knows how to create a social ambience. Look who's here. The love of my life. The one who must be obeyed. As if, Con. You've never done anything that doesn't please you. Well, Car, you might be right there, but it pleases me to introduce you to my newest concoction, made in your honour, our first anniversary. Oh, is it really? One year? I'm not hurt one bit that you forgot. Leaf finds his heart breaking. I'm so sorry I've been so busy. Never mind all that. Get your chops around this and prepare for a lift off. He hands me an elaborate looking cocktail with Luke. I need to learn how to say that word. And a little umbrella. It's called Curiosity. It's like iced tea. With a devilish twist. I'm losing accents at this point because we are like five hours in. <laughs> four, four, 
four or five hours. I'm a little nervous as I raise the drink to my lips. You never know with Connor, but to my surprise, it's very sweet. I can taste the mana and the instant lift from the life water. It's very nice. Oh gosh. Then it hits me, the powerful spirit I have to taste. Something akin to brain freeze. Connor started laughing. And there's the secret ingredient. It's not that secret. I know that kick anyway. You said you got rid of all that pirate grog. Would you really deny a fellow a private collection? But look no car. That's not the main thing. No. The main thing is this. He fumbles around his pocket and produces a small oyster shell. It looks like it has been polished up. On our first anniversary, I want to ask you. Bar has gone silent. All eyes are on me. If you would do me the honour of wearing my ring. Mudley speechless, Connor opens the shell, and laying on a bed of dried petals is an odd looking pearl wrapped in some copper wire attached to a palm leaf thong. It's really weird. Ha! <laughs> Hello, me. Connor loops it over my head to hang around my neck as the ugliest pendant I've ever seen. Look, I have one too. He rips open his shirt to show an almost identical homemade necklace resting in his chest fur. Wow, I mean, wow, that's, um, did you make them yourself? With my own fair hands? In that case, I love it. I will wear this with pride. Uh, and the whole bar whoops and cheers. The music starts up and I look around thinking I could not be happier. <laughs> Oh god, it's so much easier to reach Trish's cave since the path was made. In only one year the island has been transformed. Our end is like a proper village now. With a shop, bar, calf, school and of course Bell's alternative therapies. I'm coming today in my lunch hour at Bell's insistence. Your aura is always overdue for a cleanse. There's far too much green. And that's a bad thing? No, no colour is bad. It's just unbalanced. You still lead too much with your heart. And we need to keep your head level with it. I'm a scientist, Bell. I'm all about the head. Hey, all about the head. You're a vet now, actually. And you're the biggest heart on this island. That one goes to you. There's not a personal cat here that would disagree. Shh. She began her cleansing. I'm lying on a very comfortable massage table and looking at the ceiling of crystals shining and twinkling. The effect is hypnotic. The cave has developed into a wonderful magical therapy space. It's a contrast to the now high-tech establishment in what we still call base camp, full of labs and veterinary surgery, the best equipment and machines of every kind. This place, though, is more like a sanctuary and has proved extremely popular amongst our growing population. Trixie never ceases to amaze me. It seems almost daily she has learned something new, read an article or book, taken an online course that continually expands her field of expertise, she has us all meditating and breathing through our chakras. Just this morning, one of the children asked if they could hold some rose quartz while I did a routine blood test. He said it helps the vein expand. We're all learning. We left the far end of the island intact, and there are safety markers which clearly outline when you're crossing into elder territory. It's a mark of respect rather than segregation, an acknowledgement that the island belongs to them as well as us. Much better. Am I balanced? Do you feel balanced? There's something missing. She looks a little hurt. Oh. Did my best, Humi. Sometimes I think she forgets that she says Humi now too. <laughs> and you did it beautifully. I feel great. But you said... I didn't mean with me. I'm 100% balanced and shining like a rainbow. Look. Stand on one leg with my arms out. Perfectly steady. You look like Percival doing his yoga. This only thing missing, thing that would balance us completely is. Take a deep breath. A kitten or two, or three, even. This a split second when neither of us breathe. Then suddenly Belle has launched herself at me, knocking us both over. Yes, yes, yes to all three. Triplets? Triplets? When we're administering the answer to all the cats who wished to be rehumanized, we discovered that there were lots of litters of kittens who became children. It's difficult for the parents to cope. 
We were already like one large family anyway, so some of the adults adopted some of the children and it just worked in a haphazard island kind of way. There are three children whose parents have not been found who are ready to leave the hospital. I thought how perfect they would be for us, but I wasn't sure what Belle would think. It's a lot to take on. Now lying under the twinkling crystal sky of her cave. Hmm, that sounds wrong. I have my answer. It really has all worked out better than I could have wished for. I'm dropping by Miranda's for the picnic lunch. We both had the afternoon off, so we thought it would be nice to go further afield today and see how the far end of the island is doing in the aftermath of everything that has happened. It's been a year to the day that Kitty Fisher signed our agreement, and we reclaimed the island. So much has changed. Well, on our side anyway. We have a school, a veterinary hospital, proper chalets, a couple of shops, a cafe, even a cocktail shack to unwind after work. The biggest change, though, has been with the inhabitants. There were a lot of cats who chose to be rehumanized. Two main points have to be addressed. One was that there were litters of kittens who became orphaned, and also parents who couldn't cope with so many kids once their kittens were turned into children. Okay, so we're getting the same story, just with a different flavor each time. Gradually, we sorted it out. Some of us adopted some of them, and it seemed to work in a haphazard island sort of way. The second thing was communication. Nico and I discovered through trial and loss of error that if we got that balance just right and mixed trace amounts of elder blood with the antidote, we could all understand each other. We spoke the same language. It made life so much easier. There were and still are some teaching problems. People coming to terms with what happened to them it made sense for Miranda to become the island counsellor. Nobody was better placed to understand the trauma caused by incarceration and loss of loved ones long-term illness and pain her empathy is stronger than anyone i know and so is her ability to shrug it off it doesn't look high tech i'm gonna be as i approach i can see the engaged sign is showing on her tent letting me know that she hasn't finished with her last client although i'm sitting a respectful distance away their voices carry through the quiet of the forest and i hear miranda speak just remember there are no boxes anymore only those you create in your mind you're as free as you allow yourself to be so come on Hug and go play. After a moment of silence, a small cat slinks out of the tent and passes by me. Hey, Larry. Hi. And hi to you. Hope you've got some decent food. I'm famished. But picky. She looks miserable as fuck. Only the best, of course. Moira says hello. We make our way beyond the markers and now clearly the funny area formerly known as the Danger Zone. It's not segregation, it's a mark of respect. It shows we understand that the island belongs to the elders and we will not transgress their rightful ownership. There's no hostility. We tolerate each other with goodwill. When we settled near the cliff's edge and finished our lunch, Miranda pulls out a notebook from her pocket. I finished it. Oh, really? That's fantastic. Want to hear it? No, because then I've got to say it. You really need to ask? I love her poetry she become an exceptional writer, and I'm her biggest fan. Oh god, this one's for you. Really? I feel my self blush with pride. It's called Bore. Oh. Just listen. Bore. You bore into my soul, and you find me there. Hidden under layers of I don't care, and leave me alone, and I'm okay. Buried deep beneath the things I cannot say. You tunnel through the acid from my scalding tongue. Scale the wall of silence where my truth is hung. Create escape routes for me. Show me you adore me. Lovingly ignore me when I say I'm done. You stroke me even when I scratch. The love I toss aside you catch. Your heart is always on the latch. We really are a perfect match. I sit in silence for a moment. Didn't you... Maybe you didn't understand it. It was... I know what it was. It was beautiful. Thank you. We are, you know. We are what? Perfect match. We've been here for almost a year now, and I still can't get used to knocking on the door of Tom's cabin. He takes it very seriously, though. He says respect and privacy are things he went without for too long, and he wants them upheld now. So here he is, with his own office. An island archivist. Hey, Floof. I'm the only person on the island who gets away with calling him that. Come. Are you taking a break anytime soon? Almost done. I just need to finish describing this piece of bone that the triplets found while they were mudlarking yesterday. What is it? Can I see? 
He hands me a whitish grey fragment, about three inches wide and five inches long. As I turn it over in my hand, I can see a beige tint around the edge and recognise it straight away. Oh, Tom, this is from the Blue Mars area. He looks sheepish. Now, now, let's not get head up. But you know I don't want the children to play around there. It's too risky until we finish our research into the drowsy properties. They have been told, but children will play. Just not there. Please speak to them after school. You really need to relax, my dear. The island is a safer place as one could wish to raise these children. We know every inch of it. I'm an archivist, and you're a researcher. Between us, there's nothing we don't know about this tiny speck of planet here. Even so, I still get nervous about them being exposed to things we don't understand fully. The entire universe is full of things we don't understand. I know what happened last year in rebuilding and safeguarding that's taken place since brought a lot of change and getting used to new things. Stop in my tracks. What is it? Listen to you. I realise that amongst all the changes that have taken place, the biggest has been here right under my nose. Fluffy but stuck in his ways, rigid, blinkered and stuffy been transformed into Tom. Calm, reliable, safe. And above all, even tempered. Father, it suits you. Adopting the triplets has agreed with you. After administrating the... Oh, here we go again. To all the cats on the island who wanted to be rehumanized, we discovered that there were, of course, litter of kittens whose parents couldn't cope with them all when they became human. So some of us adopted them. They worked in a chaotic, haphazard island kind of way. We're all one big family here now anyway, really. Well, they are agreeable little people. He's such a softy when it comes to the children. They can run rings around him. Yes, they are. And so are you. We are so happy together. Sometimes I can't quite believe it. This strange story could not have had a better ending for us. And I'm very grateful for it. Yeah, the end again? Is it really the end this time, though? Well, we got the credits. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cool, 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 cool. Back. It is the end. Endings found. Bosh. But how much of the game have I seen? Oh, man, 93%. Well, we know it was 88.8. So that gave us 4.2. So that theoretically gets to 97.2 if I go through and do all that again but stay on not stay on the yeah, island go to the mainland do I get that choice where do we start I think we're back at the point where yeah damn so I have got to play the whole bloody game again if you enjoyed this episode I want to see the story that led up to this point then there is a link in the description and I've probably thrown a card up somewhere. There is an entire series on this channel where we played through the original game and I voiced way too much, way too long and did all of the stories. 